Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AutoCAD professional with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to recover our drawings using back files. While working in AutoCAD, we may experience internet disruptions or power outages. And if that happens, we could lose all of our work, especially if we're working from a server. So luckily, every time we save our drawing, something called a back file is created, and we can use it to get the previous version of a file. When I say previous, I mean the version that was saved prior to the last save, not the most up-to-date save. So another example of an issue, if you're working in a drawing and something completely bugs out, doesn't work properly, or your drawing gets corrupted, then the back file can be used to load the file before any issues happened. And hopefully that issue didn't happen in the previous save. So how can we use it? Firstly, let's demonstrate what I just explained. We have this object here that I've already made and saved previously. I'm now just going to add a line and let's just draw it right over here at a random angle. And there's our new line. Now I'm going to save this file and now we're going to close out of the file. Let's pretend that the file got corrupted and we need to use our back file. So we're going to open this folder right here. Here's the file that I was using and we have a back file for it right down here. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to right click on this file and we're going to rename it. All we have to do is rename the extension at the end. Because I don't want to lose my original file, I'm also going to rename the file itself so they don't overwrite each other. So I'm going to put underscore backup and I'm going to rename the extension. So I'm going to delete the back at the end of the dot and put DWG instead. Basically a back file is a DWG that's been renamed to something different. So I'm going to press enter. Now it's asking me if I change a file extension, the file might become unusable. Do you want to change it? And most of the time the answer is no, because if you do change the file extension, usually it's not usable. But in this case, the back file is meant to be changed. And so this is the workflow. So we're going to say yes. When we do that, you might have noticed that the icon for the file has immediately changed. So if I didn't have a default icon for it, which I don't, I actually use act as a database, then my back files are just showing that as a default icon. So now we can see the DWG icon. This is very good. Let's test it and see what objects are in it. And actually, we can already see in the preview that the line that I drew is not there. So this is already a good sign. If we preview the other file, there's our line. So just like I said, the back file has taken the previous save, not the most up-to-date save. This is usually a good thing. And there we go. Now our backup file is usable. It's a DWG again. So now I can continue working on it. And it doesn't have any of the issues that the more up-to-date file could have if it had any issues. If you've saved your work and you don't see a back file in the same folder as your DWG files, that means that there's a setting that's been changed in AutoCAD. You can access this by typing I save and back is the last parts. So you can click on this and it asks you to change it from either one to zero. One means that it's turned on and zero means that it's turned off. I'm not gonna change mine, so I'm just gonna press the escape key. You can also find the setting by going to the big red A in the upper left and then going to options and it's found under the open save, open and save tab. And we can see that it is right here. Create backup copy with each save. While we're here, we're also going to look at automatic save. And this is a toggle that allows our drawings to automatically save themselves every so often. And 10 minutes is set as the default. And I believe we can set it to as frequent as five minutes if we needed to. So for example, I'm just gonna click in another dialog box to solidify that. And then I can click apply and okay if I wanted to. Now, automatic saves are very useful, but if they're set too frequently, or if you're working from a network or a USB drive, then the automatic save may be a bit slow, and you'll notice that your mouse may stop working for a couple of seconds to process the save. But if you're working with local files, and if you have a powerful computer, then this process doesn't really get interfered with too much. I'm gonna set mine from 10 to 15 minutes, because I tend to save manually pretty often anyway. So now I'm gonna click apply and okay. And the autosave feature is quite useful in that regard. 
Before we learn more about automatic saves, I wanted to mention that there's a special command that allows you to change the location of all of your back files. So if you want to have a specific folder for your back files and you don't want them to automatically save in whichever folder your DWG is in, then you can type in a command called move back. And here it is. Now this command is a bit odd to use and how it works is it's asking you for a file path. There is an easy way to do this, and of course, the hard way would be to type in an actual file path, and you'd have to type it in perfectly. Now, if you ever need to reset this, all you need to do is press the period key and then enter, and it's done. I'm going to press the escape key, and I'm going to go into this folder that we've been looking at, and I'm going to copy my file path here. Let's pretend that we want to use this as the file path. So I'm just going to click once at the top right here, Control C, and then I'm just going to minimize this. And this part is also a little tricky. I'm going to type in the command again. And I can't just copy immediately because it's going to activate the copy within the program. So the trick to this is type in any letter first. So I'm just going to type the letter C. Now I can do Control V to paste, essentially. And I'm going to get rid of the small c. This is my file path. I'm going to press Enter. And now it's been done. If it says there's a new value and it shows that value right down here in your command line, you know that it worked. We can also test this by typing the command one last time, clicking on move back, and there is my file path. So I'm going to reset it because I like my back files to be in the same folder as whichever DWG files that I'm using, and I'm not always using them in this folder. So I'm just going to press the period key and press enter. There's my new value. It's all been done. After the colon, it shows the period. And just as a quick test, if we go back to the move back function, it is basically empty. And it shows us that there's a little blue highlight there. There's not even a period there. So the period is essentially a command function. And so that's how our back file locations can be managed. Let's learn more about automatic saves. We could go to options in order to change its duration like we did earlier. But instead of going all the way here, we can just type in a command for that. So if I type in save time, there is the command. And now there's my duration that I input earlier for 15 minutes. And I can change that whenever I want to. Now, besides being able to change the duration of automatic saves, they work in very particular ways. If, for example, I do a manual save right now, then the automatic save timer will be halted. And if I don't make any changes to my drawing, automatic saves will not occur. So I won't even notice that they're happening. An automatic save will have a special file extension. It will have .sv and the dollar sign at the end of it. And you'll see them in your folder if you make changes. So for example, I'm just going to make a line right here. And later on, we'll go and see when the automatic save creates itself. But essentially, that's how automatic saves work in a nutshell. I've allowed some time to pass, and now we're going to see if the automatic save worked. What I've done is, is I've changed my variable from 15 minutes to 5, and an automatic save happened. And I can tell by going to my command line and clicking on this arrow right here, and I can see my entire command history, as we call it, and here's my automatic save. It happened, here is the folder that it's located in, here is the file with a very interesting set of numbers at the end, and the extension .sv$. Now, let's say I wanted to change this file path, and I want my automatic saves to go to another location. What I can do is, is I can type in save file path, and there it is, save file path is right here. And now it's asking me to choose its location, and I can type in anything I want. I'm going to leave it at the default. I kind of like it where it goes, although it is a bit hard to find those files, so I could have a dedicated folder for it. So I'm just going to press the escape key and cancel out of the command. But it works just like save file, where you can basically specify a folder location and just go into your folder, copy it up here, and paste it right in. And that's essentially where we can find our automatic saves. Now, if you save with a manual save or a quick save, you can do it by clicking on the save button here, doing a save as, you can type in Q save, for example. This will overwrite the automatic save if it exists, because it is basically more up to date and the automatic save will only exist after the DWG is closed out if, for example, AutoCAD crashed or something like that. So this is how you can use the automatic saves. They're basically a, another way to recover files similar to back files, but they're a bit more automatic in their nature. There's another kind of file that gets created when AutoCAD is in use and you're working with a DWG and it's called a temporary file. It has the extension .ac$ 
and essentially it doesn't have any smart data and we can't really recover our drawing with it. But it's still there and sometimes it persists and I just wanted to explain that to you guys before we move on to a very important topic called the Drawing Recovery Manager. Now, in order to initiate the Drawing Recovery Manager, we're going to change some settings and I want to explain a few things while we do. Firstly, we're going to change our save time and make sure that it's set to one minute as frequent as we can. Good, it's already set there, so I'm just going to type it again and press enter just in case. I was doing some testing, so it was set to five minutes before. And now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to draw one line right up here, and then I'm going to save the file. That way we have a new back file and a new save. And then I'm just going to draw a couple of flanking lines, and our auto save is going to pick them up in roughly a minute from now. Now, while we wait for that, I want to explain some testing that we did. What happened was if AutoCAD crashes or if you're, you lose power to the entire computer and your computer shuts itself down, then AutoCAD is going to initiate the Drawing Recovery Manager. We can also simulate this by going to our Task Manager and forcing AutoCAD to essentially quit, which is what we're going to do very soon, but we're not going to do it quite yet. So let's minimize that for now. And what happened was that your autosave is the most up-to-date recovery method, especially if your frequency is very high with it, because if you're not manually saving, then your back file and your DWG are not updating themselves. So when you go to recover your data, you're not really going to get anything. The autosave is really what saves it. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to wait until the autosave initiates in our command line. It's going to pop up very soon automatically here in the command line. And then we're going to basically go to our task manager and force AutoCAD to quit. And the drawing recovery manager is really great. It picks up on the DWG, your back file, and your autosave file. So very, very useful. And it pops up automatically if anything happens, if you basically AutoCAD has some kind of issue. And there it is. There it is in our command line, automatic save. Let's confirm right here. Perfect. So now we're ready to initiate the test. So we're going to go to our task manager, go to AutoCAD, and I'm just going to end task, and I'm not going to respond to the prompt. It's actually asking me to save the drawing. And this is the issue right now, because when we do this, we're not really forcing AutoCAD to quit. AutoCAD understands that it had enough time to quit. It wasn't really interrupted for any reason. The Drawing Recovery Manager will still initiate, so let's open up AutoCAD again. And we're going to see the Drawing Recovery Manager so I can at least show you guys all the files that it's going to pick up. And it's also going to pick up on other files that you may have been working on. So not just the latest file that you were working on. If you had multiple files open or files that were recovered in the past, you're going to see them in the Recovery Manager. Here it is, Drawing Recovery. And the program terminated unexpectedly. That's basically how you initiate this. And so we can go to show details and it essentially gives us instructions on how to use the Drawing Recovery Manager. So I could just say, do not show this message again, but I like to see it whenever AutoCAD has any crash. So now we don't see anything that's changed really, but on the left side, we can see the Drawing Recovery Manager is right here. If we mouse over it, here's our file. We can click on the plus sign and there it is. We have basically everything. Let me expand this so you guys can see it. This is our auto save right here with the proper extension at the end, .sv dollar sign. And then we have our backup, or excuse me, we have our .back file and we have our main DWG. It says underscore backup because I renamed this earlier in the tutorial. So as you can see in the previews down here, the backup is not as up to date as the DWG because we made a line and saved it. So the backup was one save previous. And there is our autosave showing all the two the lines, including the two flanking ones. So we're going to use this. So if we double click on it from the Drawing Recovery Manager, it actually opens up, but right now it's the wrong file extension. So what's very important is that you do a save as of this and you turn it back into a DWG essentially. So let's do save as, let's make sure our extension is correct. Now, all of this data at the end we don't really need and it's good to get rid of it just in case because we do have the old extension with the proper extension at the end and it is saving as an AutoCAD drawing. But I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm going to call it uh, number two. This is our second backup of the whole thing. So then, and look what it says at the beginning as well. So sometimes it changes that text, sometimes it doesn't. So very good. So now we're just going to click on save and perfect. Now we've got it. Everything is as it should be. We have recovered our drawing, and that's how the Drawing Recovery Manager works. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on recovering drawings with autosave and back files. 
Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.